First uh, Kings chapter 22, and we'll pick forth in verse 22. 22, 22. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? He said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. So Ahab has false prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also, go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of, of all these prophets, there's 400 of them, of all these prophets, lost my place, uh, of all these prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, this is one of the head of the prophets, the son of Cheniah, went near and smoked Micaiah, he's the good prophet, on the cheek. That's the first time cheek shows up. And they smoked Jesus upon the cheek and pulled the beard off his cheeks and said, which way went the spirit of the Lord from the from me to speak to thee? You know, he's he's mocking. Slaps my kind of thing. Oh, what, what about the Holy Spirit with that? Huh? What about that? Zedekiah got offended. And he should. Because Micaiah just said, God said, you know what, Micaiah? The devil spoke to you. And Micaiah said, behold. Thou shalt see in that day. And that's a very important expression there. If you're ever going to mark your Bible. In that day. That's when the Lord comes. In that day. It's not a good phrase. In that day. When thou shalt go into an inner chamber. To hide thyself. Now. What would this be. If we were to know today. It would be like a bomb shelter. A, a fallout shelter. He's going to go inside of an inner inner of a house. When the battle comes, when Ahab's going to fall, this guy's going to go run and hide. Great guy. And the king of Israel, Ahab, said, Take Micaiah, carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and Joash, the, the king's son, and say, Here's the orders. Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison. The crime is for speaking the truth. Jehoshaphat called Micaiah. Jehoshaphat said, listen, I don't want these false witnesses. I don't want these false prophets. Let's find a man of God. And Ahab said, well, this is Micaiah. I hate him because he always prophesies bad concerning me. Evil. He never preaches good. He never has a love message. I don't go to his church. And... Jehoshaphat says, shut up. <laughs> I want to hear him. And then he, King Ahab sends a messenger out. The messenger's like, hey, the unity of the prophets is go to battle and win. And Micaiah comes up and he speaks the truth and he says more sense. In, and one is that these prophets are the mouth of Satan. And we ran those scriptures the other night. Put this fellow in prison for speaking the truth. And that is Baptist history. That is Christian history. Men and women for the word of God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ, and the prophets, which is also spoken about Jesus, have been denied rights, have been denied life, has been put into prison. Hebrews 11 speaks about it. There's death, there's prison, there's banishment, there's confiscation, there's fines and penalties for the word of God. That's Bible. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus now suffer persecution. Now, you want, you want to hide behind the Constitution, you want the freedoms, you want the rights, then don't expect your churches to grow. Because Egypt, when they, I mean, Israel and Egypt, book of Exodus, and they made them serve with rigor. And the more they, 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 get, they served them hard, and the more they put work on them, the more they grew. The church was persecuted, and to the word of God was added. When you're in relaxation, nothing grows. But when you're going to stand for Jesus Christ, whether it be life or death, and people look at it and say, you know what, that must be something. Feed him with the bread of affliction, 
and the water affliction. All right, this would be just enough to survive. We're not going to go all out and put drinking fountains in the prison. And if you're going to get any diet, you're going to get the leftover of the leftover, the bread that, you know, we got maybe three quarters of the price or that was given to us free off the merchants. It's probably moldy. It's probably green. And it's been sitting for a while. And it's stale. And it's bread that no one else would eat. And it would be by limitations. You're only going to get this amount this day or maybe a couple days until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, if thou return at all in peace, if you do come back in peace, King, the Lord has not spoken by me. Notice Micaiah doesn't fight the king. He doesn't come up cursing. He doesn't pull out his weapons. He doesn't fight. He says, listen, King, the last words you just said, if you return in peace, then my prophecy is wrong. God did not speak to me. You're not coming back alive. That's the final prophecy that Micaiah has to Ahab. You come back, I'm wrong. And he said, hearken, O people, every one of you. And he's calling out all the, before he's carried away, everybody listen to me. So there's a life sentence of Micaiah. Now, to tell you what, what we're going to read tonight is Ahab dies. Okay, we're going to read that. He dies in battle. Never is Micaiah ever mentioned again. The last place we leave Micaiah, he's on his way to prison. With bread affliction and water affliction. We're never told if he gets out. The orders were by the king. And the orders of the king were, for, were fulfilled. You keep him there till I come back in peace. He never came back in peace. So the orders would be Micaiah would rot and die in jail unless something the Holy Spirit has not told us. So you can imagine Micaiah, he's not fighting. He says, listen, if you come back in peace, I'm a false prophet. Which he's also saying, you're not coming back. And the, order, and the orders were, thus saith the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread affliction and with water affliction until I come in peace. You don't come back. Micaiah says, you ain't coming back. I'm going to jail for life. And he doesn't fight. He doesn't argue. And he doesn't call a lawyer. And we don't know what happened to him. God does. So the king of Israel, Ahab, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Jews. Now look at that. Have you noticed as we're coming to the end of Ahab's life, he all of a sudden doesn't have a name no more? Guess where he's going? He's going to a place where there's no name. As far as he's coming up to his death, it will be mentioned, but as far as we're coming up to the death of Ahab, he has no name. Jehoshaphat, he's doing well, except for he's mingled into Ahab and Jezebel. King of Judah went up to Ramoth Gilead. Again, this is a city of refuge. And this is going to be the place, death, by Ahab. You know what city of refuge was? It was one of the city. You're out cutting cutting lumber, and you accidentally drop the tree on the guy. You're out there. You're 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 trying to move your cows, your or your sheep, and all that, and you accidentally the guy falls off the horse because you and he dies. You're doing construction on your house, and something you you hit him in the head, and he falls down, and he dies. You did not do it intentionally. There was no premeditated thing. But the fact is, it is homicide. And you were to go to the one of the cities of refuge. And you were be if you were to be found innocent, that you did not kill and murder him, but there was death because of you, liability, you were to stay in that city of refuge to the death of the high priest. Well, isn't it funny, in a roundabout kind of way through his wife, Naboth died. And this king's going to go to Ramoth Gilead, which is, he's not going there for the city of refuge, he's going there because Syria has taken it. And he's going to die in that city. And yet, 
the high priest, I would assume, is going to keep living. Kind of interesting. The king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, now everyone now knows I'm going to hit on this one. I will disguise myself. Ooh, he's going to put on a Halloween costume. Like King Saul. He's going to dress up like uh, Jeroboam's wife. Hey, honey, put put on a disguise. And that's where the first time that word shows up. Jeroboam's wife. And disguise yourself to be another person. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to say anything about youth rallies. I'm not going to say anything about youth night and vacation. But I won't mention those three things at all. But what I'm going to say is he's heard his false prophets. He has heard the prophet of the Lord. And what is his reaction? What if my kid is right? I'm going to disguise myself. I am not going to be who I am. At this moment with religion... Ahab has denied, has forsaken his prophets. He's got a little doubt in his heart, in his mind. If my K is right, <laughs> I'm in trouble. So what I'll do is I'll pretend to be somebody else. He's afraid. He's frightened. I will disguise myself. And boy, wow, that's all he's going to say about it. And enter into the battle. Now watch this remark. Put... But put thou on thy robes. Jehoshaphat, yes. I'm going to disguise myself. I'm going to go into battle. You put your kingly robes on. He sent Jehoshaphat to die. Instead of him. Because in battles like this. And if you ever play Stratego. It's the flag. It's the king. If you ever played uh, chess. It's to get the king. So what. Ahab saying to, to Jehoshaphat, you dress like the king. <laughs> Fingers crossed, behind my back. And they'll kill you and I'll be alive. What an alliance. After Jehoshaphat says, my horses will be your horses, my men will be your men, we will go in unity. And Ahab says, hey, get dressed to kill. Now, I think that's one of the expressions, dresses will kill or dress to kill. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into battle. Coward. All right, 31. But the king of Syria, then Adad, who was supposed to be dead. But Ahab let him go. Be not deceived, God's not mocked whatsoever, man. So if this guy is supposed to be dead, okay, he's not dead. You didn't kill him. He's going to kill you. Commanded his 30 and 2 captains. These are the rulers. These are the men of the men of the men of the men. These are the heads. That had rule over his chariots. Saying, all right, here's the orders. Ready? Fight neither with small nor great. Infantrymen, horsemen, chariotmen, warriors, captains, generals. Leave them alone. The orders are so far, no one you're to fight with. What a battle. He gives his orders, no one. Whether they be the grunt in the kitchen or the guy that's on the horse has got all the medals and the great sword. Leave them alone. Save only with the king of Israel, Ahab. So the orders are, all his captains... 32 of them going to command his whole entire army. Your main objective is not the people in the army. It's Ahab only. I want one death in this battle. And only one death. And that's Ahab. What orders? This is the man that was spared by Ahab. And they're fighting over a piece of land. Got to watch who you make alliances with. And we're going to see this through as we study through the scriptures of the Old Testament. Oh, if I give you gold, will you leave this king and come protect me? Well, listen, if he bought the gold to leave that king and join you, wouldn't you think a higher amount of money would be for him to leave you and join someone else to go against you? These guys have been enemies. And just because he came soft toe, I think it was something like that. He, no, that was, no, that was, 
somewhere else. We came soft. Just because he comes up to, oh, you know, please forgive me. I'm so sorry. His orders are kill Ahab. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, surely it's the king of Israel. There he is. There it is. Here's the king. He's dressed like the king. He's got to be the king. That's our objective. And that's what Ahab wanted. We killed the king. And by the time they would brought the body over and whatever they do and stuff like that, it would be like Ahab would, okay, they got him. I'm going to run. God's clever. Sure, he is the king of Israel. So they can't really tell. But it's a king. How do you know? By the clothes, by the robes. And they turned aside to fight against him, Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing it. All right, so that's not the right one. All right, let's turn around. And notice it says captains. There's more than one captains are chasing Jehoshaphat. And whatever Jehoshaphat yells out, whatever his voice is, whatever it is, they're like, that's not the one. Orders are, that's not the king. Wrong one. And watch this, 34. And a certain man drew a bow. You got to pay attention to that certain man. That's throughout the scriptures. You'll even find that in the, in the life stories of Jesus Christ. A certain man. And sometimes he's not, not, he's not named. There was a certain man that went out and, and sold seeds on the way, wayside and, the, and, the, and the four or five places where he put the seed up. God knows who that man is. The Holy Spirit said there is a certain man. But you don't know who he is. I do. Isn't it be great that you are known by God, but you are unknown to other people? And that the work of God that you are, that God has for you, you are known by God, but to some people, I don't know who the person was that witnessed the Joe Caswell that witnessed to me. I don't know which disciple or apostle that I can run my lineage back to. But there was a certain one of them. And it says a certain man. There's one man. Not an army. Get that. One man. Drew a bow. At a venture. That's a, there's only one other place that word shows up. And it's the same thing. Second Chronicles 18.33. And it's the same story we're reading now. This word is used twice, and it's the same. This guy draws a bow out of venture to kill Ahab. So this is the first time it shows up. And the only other place is 2 Chronicles 18, 33 or 35. I can't tell my writing. So this guy, God goes down. The Holy Spirit says, pull that bow. And you'll see this later on. One of the prophets will tell a king, all right, pull the bow, shoot. All right, that's the arrow delivered. All right, now take a whole, now shoot a whole bunch of arrows. Boing, boing, boing. I think you only did three or four times. And, and the prophet says, man, you should have used them all. Now you're not going to get told. That. There is a way that an arrow or a weapon could be used by God. And we're going to see it here in a moment. Do you realize those nails that were pierced into Jesus not touched one bone? Because the Bible says not a bone of him was broken. Know that, God, know that man would have taken that nail and put it upon the, the wrist or the hand of Jesus and sling it down. God drove that nail down and went injure a bone. 33. Yeah, my threes, fives, and eights all look the same. So, 1833. It's the same story. So he drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel. Do we not know his name? Between the joints, that's the first time that word shows up. And we think, oh, my aching joints of the harness. Where his armor met together. And I would assume that there's not, I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know much about armor and I could be wrong. But I would assume that there's very little, few places where that armor would be showing flesh. And I could be wrong. 
But where these two pieces of armor came together, God put that arrow right to that space in the harness and right into Ahab. Now watch, it said a certain man drew a bow at a venture. That's by chance. That's half. That's the same thing where it says Ruth, her hat was to fall upon, I forget what it says, in Boaz, Boaz's uh, field. You know what that guy did? He took that arrow, and he didn't aim. He took that arrow, went toying, and guys said, Phew. it was God that directed, not that man. He just shot an arrow. <laughs> That's what it says. And smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver, that's the first time that shows up, of his chariot. So there are two people in this chariot now. At least two. And maybe more. There were chariots of three or four. That guy takes his bow, toing, and that arrow hit at least one of them occupants, the right occupant of God in that chariot, of at least two people in that chariot. Right between the harness. Turn thy hand, steer the carriage, I mean the, the chariot, and carry me out of the host. So there's a whole bunch of men <laughs> with Ahab in his chariot. That man takes that bone to twing, and it misses everybody. It misses the driver and goes right between the joints of the harness. And carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. He's been struck. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrian. So he's propped up. He's, he's getting tired. He's getting fatigued. And died at even. That's after 6 p.m. And the blood ran out of the wound in the midst of the chariot. So Micaiah's prophecy has come to pass. Ahab's dead. The false prophets of religion were wrong. Ahab lost faith in his religion that he disguised himself. He did not have the assurance in religion. And he died a lost man. Whereas if he were to follow Micaiah, if he were to follow Elijah, these things have I written unto you, I know it's written in the New Testament, these things have I written to you that you may know you have eternal life. Ahab didn't know nothing. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down to the sun. It means 6 p.m. Saying every man to his city and every man to his own country. All right, get out of here. So the king died. There he is. No name. The rich man died and was brought to Samaria. All right, let's think about this now. Let's think about this now. Verse 30. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself. The king of Israel disguised himself. You imagine this chariot coming into Samaria now. Where is the king's body? In this chariot. It's dead. Let's Is that the king? Yeah, that's the king. Why does he don't look like the king? Why is he not wearing his royal armor? Why is he not wearing his royal garment? Would it be maybe to a fact is, if he was wearing his robes, that would have protected him? I would assume that the kings would have robes into battle. He's wearing a harness of an ordinary soldier, I would assume. And they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed his chariot in the pool of Samaria. Now let's run over to chapter 21, verse 19 real quick. Before we finish. 21, 19. Elijah speaking. Two prophets, prophecies have now come to be. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed? We talked about that the other night. And also taking possession. And thou shalt speak, saying unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, 
Shall the dogs lick thy blood, even thine? Isn't that funny how it says even? That means even you, but even. That's when he died. So back to chapter 22. And one washed a chariot in a pool of Samaria. And the dogs licked up his blood. All right, Elijah. All right, Micaiah. Micaiah, excuse me. Two men of prophets of the Lord came to pass in one afternoon. And they washed his armor. The one that didn't work. <laughs> According to the word of the Lord which he spake. So as they're washing the blood off the, the chariot and off the, the, the garments and all that, it's flowing. You know, you, you wash the car and you, you've seen the water puddle. Uh, and the dogs are all huddling around, feasting on the blood. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, now he's got a name, but he, you know, this is history. He's dead. We're going to re just review what he, who he was and what he was. But his last life had no name. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab and all that he did. Oh, this will get people mad. And the ivory house which he made. Solomon made an ivory throne. All right. And overlaid it with gold. This guy built a whole house. And it doesn't have to be just elephant. I understand that whale bones and walruses and elephants and there's many animals that had that ivory this guy builds a whole house out of it it's amazing. look at the wealth look at the the empire look at the and this goes on today in the arabians and saudi arabia and all those well petroleum countries they, man they just it's lavish of complete wealth that you can't even think about they would laugh at a dollar bill, and they wouldn't even consider coins. They're well. This guy takes an ivory and builds a house. And all the cities that he built, one of them was Samaria. Remember, he bought it. Are they not written in the book of Chronicles? We'll get to that, hopefully, Lord willing, of the kings of Israel. So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaza, or Ahaza, Ahaza, his son reigned in his stead, and we're going to stop right there. We'll, Lord willing, close First Kings out next time. But there's a death. There's a death of a man that would not listen to God, even though the Lord of God, the Word of God spoke, and the Word of God was done. So when you tell people, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And they don't listen like Ahab. They're going to be nameless. And they're going to go to hell. Whatever they think. Whatever. I'll, I'll just pretend. I'll just do religion. I'll disguise myself. God won't recognize me. And the word of God will happen. And you'll be in trouble. 